Hello. In this video, I will explain the definition of the tangent line. And I will do so using the following function. I hope we all know that this function, or in fact the graph of this function, is a half circle, like this. Yeah, this is the one. What I will do, I'll take a point on this half circle, at the line x half, like this, at the point x equals a half, the value of my function is square root 3 on 2, so the point is 1 half square root 3 on 2, that's the point on my graph, and we can of course build a tangent to my circular arc at this point, this is a tangent, but what I will do, I'll take any other line through this point, any other line through this point, like this for instance, this is a line with the unknown slope, which I called k in this example, which passes through the point a, a half square root 3, Here's my line, y equals, let's just introduce the parameter k, say k equals 1. And now here's my line, y equals k times x take a half plus square root 3 on 2. This is a line with a slope k. If I change my slope, the line changes as well. You can see it on this demo. For different case, it's a different line, but all of them, they pass through this point A, point at half, and height square root 3. Now, I will first observe that if I try to compute the limit when x approaches a half, and I'll try to measure the distance or the difference between these two functions, if I do so, the limit, if I try to compute that limit, I'll replace f with the formula for f, I replace t with the formula for t, and then we can immediately observe that we're looking here at a continuous function, which is well defined at the point of half. So for such functions, when we compute the limit, all we have to do, we have to replace x with a half and compute the expression. That's what I do here. I replace x here with a half. I replace x here with a half, and that will be the limit. That's what the continuity dictates. If you quickly crunch the numbers here, you will find out the limit is 0. This is the reflection of the fact that no matter what your slope is, no matter what your slope is, the difference between the point on the graph and the point on this line will vanish if your x approaches, uh, approaches a half. I'll show you this by doing this. I'll take a, a as a parameter. Now I take a point at a uh, and h of a. This is a point on my line. You can see it moves. This is a point b right here. Now if I take a point at a g of a, that's the point on my graph, no, f of a, rather, yeah, point c, see these two points, they converge, they converge when we approach to this x equal half position. If I take now the segment uh, vector from b to c, yeah, this is a vector which represents this this vector represents this distance, and when my point x approaches a, my vector vanishes to zero. What you see right now with this pink vector, this is analytically expressed in this limit. Now, what I will do next, I will show you how tangent line, so when k becomes exactly tangent line, this vector behaves far better than just vanishing zero. This vector, which shows this dist uh, distance, for the tangent line, 
we can expect far more from this vector than just vanishing. Look, for the tangent line, if I take the limit of the quotient like this, rather than this difference alone, so not only I take the distance between the f and t, I also take this distance and I quotient it, or divide it by the difference between x and a half. If I compute this limit, so that's what I'm going to have, I'm going to replace f with the formula for f, and then t with the formula for t, and if I compute this limit, uh, I'll skip the details for now, I'll just tell you what the limit is. The limit will be this expression, negative 1 on root 3, and take k, and what we can see is that even though this distance vanishes, when you approach point A, as my demonstrations show, once you temper this vanishing with the vanishing rate of the linear function x take a half, because linear function x take a half also vanishes when your x approaches point A. So once you temper this vanishing with the rate of vanishing of x take a half, this limit is no longer zero it's now some expression which depends on k, k being the slope of your line. But what we see is that this will be zero. This limit, this vanishing, this tempered vanishing will be zero if k is negative 1 on square root 3. How do I interpret this? I interpret this in the following way out of this abundance of different lines for the point A, there's only one very special line for which this tempered limit, not just the distance limit, but the distance quotient by the linear rate of decay, one of them has the unique, result, unique property that this one particular limit will vanish. And surprisingly, if you attempt to find the derivative of your original function, f dash x, that will be a function like this. If you find the value of that derivative at the point half, this is what you have, and the result is negative 1 on square root 3. And that's the intrinsic meaning of the tangent line. Tangent line and the derivative, it gives you that very specific slope, of the, of the linear function for which this distance vanishes not just to zero, not just to zero, but it vanishes faster than the linear rate to zero. It vanishes faster than the linear rate to zero. And that's how we explain what the tangent line is. Tangent line, it's a very special line with a very special slope for which this quotient, when you take a limit of it, equals zero. There's only one line like this, and that's the line with a slope equal to the derivative. Now, in the second part of this video, I will tell you how we compute this limit. It's a technique of interest in its own right. Uh, for that, I will expand this to a full screen, and I'll show you what happens. So, when I compute this limit, first I divide this linear term by this de uh, denominator. If I do so, I'll have this expression. So, this linear term divided by the denominator will be just k. So, we can only focus on finding the limit of this first term. So that's what I say here. We will focus on the first term and we can forget about this k because it's just a constant. Now when we compute the limit of this first term, it's a very useful technique when you compute many other limits. We introduce an auxiliary variable, which I'm going to call u, and that's the difference between x and a half. In terms of this u, x is u plus a half. So I'm going to replace x everywhere across this expression with u. Here it is. 
I take my square root expression, replace x with a half plus u. I expand this square binomial. If I do so, I'll have 3 quarters take u take u square. And now I'm going to factor out this 3 on 4 factor out of the square root. And that will give me the expression like this, where you see I use v to abbreviate this longer expression in terms of u. Now, my next step will be focusing on this expression alone. So what I will do, I will take this enumerator. I replace this square root with this expression. Once I do so, I can spot a common factor. Here it is. I take my enumerator of the limit I need to compute, this. I replace the square root with the expression like this. I spot immediately a common factor, root 3 on 2. And I factorize accordingly. Inside I'll have square root 1 take v take 1. For this bracket I will use a technique, elementary technique based on difference of squares. I introduce two auxiliary factors like this. The numerator here cancels denominator, so nothing actually changed. But if you combine now this bracket with the enumerator, you can you'll have a chance to use the difference of squares identity like this. And if I use that identity, the result will be as follows. So we stand right now here. We identify the simple expression for this enumerator. Now we're going to look at the entire fraction. For this entire fraction, I'll have, this is the enumerator as it was, that's the denominator. Now for the entire fraction, I have the expression we computed for enumerator, and we divide by u, which represents x take a half from this substitution. Now we are ready to compute the actual limit. Here it is. If I attempt to find this limit, I replace this expression with what we did in here. If I do so, I'll have a common factor, then limit. And you can see that I replaced the statement x approaches a half with the statement u approaches 0, because u and x are connected like this. In here, I can employ continuity because this is continuous function, when u approaches 0, v, when u approaches 0, v is a continuous function, so v also approaches 0, so this entire bracket becomes simply 2, so I've got, after making this observation, I've got this expression, and now if I replace v with the formula for v in here, I'm nearly there, that's what I'll have, once I cancel 2u, I'll have a limit like this, which is a limit of a continuous function once again. So I can simply substitute, and the result is negative 1 on square root 3. And that's the details, how we establish this limit. That's the details behind these dots. I hope you enjoyed this video explaining the meaning and definition of tangent line. If you did, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. And I will see you next time.